Good evening. It is April the 29th, 7.35, and uh, I'm going to try to teach uh, this lesson that I didn't wasn't able to teach Sunday because I got up too late. So I thought I'd try to do it this evening. And if it turns out well, I'll upload it. If not, well, I won't upload it. But I want to continue on with the uh, uh, message on Philippians uh, as a way to encourage us and build us up in the most holy faith. I feel I'm called to do that as a teacher to expound and expose and uh, open up the scriptures for us to hear and believe. So that's what I want to try to do this evening. And I ask God in Jesus Christ that he will work in me and teach through me this evening so that those who hear may have the word planted in their hearts and in their minds that it may find root and grow and produce fruit 30, 60, or 100 fold. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, uh, we're in uh, Philippians 4, like I said, we began last time I posted, which was two weeks ago, we began Philippians 4, and we got down to, I think, uh, verse 4. So I want to just begin again at the beginning and read that scripture. It's, it's not that long, but I'll read it, and we'll go from there. And then I'll come back and make some comments. Romans 4. Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. I employ Iodia and I employ Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, Help those women who labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness or let your meekness or your forbearing and spirit be known to all men. Don't keep yourself hidden uh, from all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious. Be anxious. Don't allow things to cause you to be uh, double-minded, so to speak, or cause you to keep your mind away from the Lord. That's what anxiety will do. That's what the word here means. It's to separate, not separate, I'm sorry, to uh, to uh, think on something else at the expense of something else. So let's don't do that, he says. He says, be anxious for nothing. And if you look that up, it means nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We have that promise. That's a promise that God has given to us all. This is a promise to all believers, that if we uh, pray with all prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, the peace of God will, so which surpasses understanding, will. Does it say, maybe, will, will. Guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Remember, everything that we have is through Christ Jesus our Lord. All the promises of God are in Him. Amen and in Him. We say amen to Him. So finally, he says, brothers, 
whatsoever things are true. You see how these are connected. Don't be anxious for anything. Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, that's your grace with your peace of God that surpasses understanding. And at the same time, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate, dwell, part there, and think about it. And this word for meditate and thinking is logizomai, and it's that you're thinking on something that's true, factual things, not assumptions, presuppositions, what is true and what is a fact. Meditate on these things, and he listed those things, what they are. And, you know, it's just, it's just not whatever things are just. Well, justice. Think about justice. You know, where does justice come from? How do you get justice? Who is just? And then whatever things are pure. Who is pure? What is purity? Are you pure? Do you need to be pure? Whatever things are lovely. I mean, you know, that's just sweet. Lovely, sweet. I mean, you know, just something that's pleasant. It's lovely. Whatever things are of a good report. Well, you know, whatever things are of a good report. Of course, the Word of God is a good report. And, uh, other things are good reports. You know, a baby being born, that's a good report. Uh, your birthday, that's a good report. Uh, you know, if you were sick and you're well, that's a good report. A good report. If there is any virtue, that thing, anything good, wholesome, you know, a virtue, we'll call it to virtue. We have virtue, and virtue is good. And it says if there's any, excuse me, if there is anything, anything <laughs> that's praiseworthy. How do we know what's praiseworthy? From the Word of God. He tells us what is good and praiseworthy, what we should praise, what we should not praise, what we should call good, what we should call evil. That's the things we should meditate on, he says. Meditate on these kinds of things. I added kinds. It doesn't say kind, but meditate on these things. And then now, he says, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, do these, or these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, what have you seen and heard? What have you believed? You know, in these meditations, what have you seen through the Word, how God is, what He has done, what the apostles have done, how they are? Practice those things. Imitate Him. He Himself says to imitate me. Christ Jesus is an example for us. We can practice those things, He says, and the God of peace will be with you because when you are in agreement with God, you're at peace with God. And that's how it is. As we go on to verse 10. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last, excuse me, your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you did not have opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, to be content. It's a wonderful thing. Now, that's what we've learned from him. That's what we've seen in him. That's what we should practice, to be content. I know how to be abased. I know how to have low things, and I know how to abound. I know how to have a lot of things. Everywhere, and in all things, 
I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Wow. That's what we see in him. That's what we heard from him. That's what we've learned from him. That's what we should practice. I can do all things, he says, through Christ who strengthens me. So he's not pretending in any way that the things that he does and the things that he's asked us to do, he does on his own. No, it's all through Christ Jesus who gives him strength. And we can do the same things through Christ who strengthens us. Then he goes on and says, Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. So you must have been in some distress. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again. Excuse me. <laughs> For my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to you, to your account. Yes, and what he seems to be saying is that when you help those in need, it is a, some kind of a account of it is made somewhere. That this is what you've done in heaven. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Now, giving, we have an obligation to give uh, to those in need, and especially to those who preach the gospel. And from what he says here, it's, a, it, it's pleasing to God. It's a sweet-smelling aroma. When you give, it, it's like giving a sacrifice and you know, they would burn the sacrifices on the altar and the, the smoke of the sacrifice would go up and it was sweet smelling to God. When we give, especially to those in need and to the, the those who are preaching the gospel, it's a sweet smelling sacrifice to God. It pleases Him. So let's do it. And uh, it's acceptable to God, well pleasing. And then he says, and my God shall supply all your need. When you give, God supplies all you need. He gives seed to the sower, bread to the eater. His. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. You know, we give according to what we have. Which, compared to God, is, is next to nothing. And well, you know, probably is more than nothing, but He supplies all of our need according to according to His riches in glory. And how, what kind of riches do you think He has in glory? <laughs> and it's by Christ Jesus. Once again, everything that we have from God is through Christ Jesus. That's how it is. Now, to our God and Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. And yes, that's true. Now he says to greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you. But especially those who are of <clears throat> oh. Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now, let's just remember that when Paul wrote this letter, he was, in fact, in prison in Rome. He'd been in prison, I don't know how long, but he's chained to a guard 24-7. And he's writing this letter 
to us, to those in Philippi and to us, with all this joy and encouragement and uh, contentment, he's got. He says he's got all that he needs. So you know, y'all have done well in giving what he asked for. Excuse me. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, he wrote this letter from prison. Paul wrote several of his letters from prison. And he spent some time in prison, Paul did. And not just in the prison here, you know, chained to uh, this uh, Roman centurion. I think this is his last imprisonment because I think he was uh, killed after this, but I'm, I'd have to recheck that. But he was in prison several times. Not He was in prison. He was beaten in prison, if you remember. Uh, and there was an earthquake, and him and, and Barnabas didn't leave, and the whole jealous household was saved. Well, here's another letter from Paul from prison. And he's, you know, talking to these Philippians. His love, he says, his beloved, his joy, and his crown. He tells them to stand fast. You know, stand fast. What? Stand fast. What? Stand fast in the Lord. Not in your wealth. Not in your beauty. Not in your abilities. You stand fast in the Lord. And this word stand fast is like... Uh, it's an army. It's a, a army word. It's when you're in the heat of battle and it looks like everything is about to be lost. You stand fast. It says, stand fast. You know, fight the battle. Stand fast. Don't break rank when it looks as if everything's going to be lost. That's when you stand fast, or stand firm, or be steadfast, or, you know, we might say, hang in there, don't quit. You know, the Lord is with you, because it's in the Lord you're standing fast. You're not standing fast in yourself, in your strength, you're standing fast in the Lord. And that means that you believe and are confident of God's salvation and deliverance that you believe what he has said and you hold fast to his words and you stand there you, you know uh, he won't thing won't allow things to be put on you more than you're able and I know we always feel like we're not able but most of us who have been to the point of not being able, we're here today. And, and when we look at it, we see that now we have more confidence, more faith, and more love in the Lord, not in ourself. As a matter of fact, we see more clearly just how in ourselves there is nothing that will cause us to stand fast because it's ourselves which causes us to be <laughs> in a position where we have to stand fast. Now, he, he talked about these couple of women who seem to have some problems. And of course, me and Miss Katie had a little conversation last time about whether he's talking about these two women or they were women. And, you know, that's fine. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, get into that too much, but he says that uh, we should help them, people like this who, you know, work in the gospel, whether they're men or women. And I don't mean pastoring and leadership because it's clear to me that in leadership, it's, it's men, it's not women. Pastors are women, are men, not women. Uh, women have roles, of course, and they can prophesy and they can, but they can't, they should not be. Uh, leaders and pastors of churches and over the authority, having that authority because there's no uh, references to women in those positions. And uh, Paul seems to make it clear that they should not be. 
Not that it could not be, but that God has so ordained them not to be. So, but, you know, if, if there is women who help in the gospel, well, we should support that. You know, the, and uh, we should uh, support anyone who does, if we can, as much as we can. Either for whatever, however way we can, uh, we should support them because I like I like this. And he says, "And the rest of my fellow workers, whose skewed names are in the book of life." Oh, excuse me. <laughs> this book of life is the mystery. You know, we we the book is talked about in. Revelation and there's you know books talked about that were the, they're open in 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 the heavens and you know you got the scroll in Revelation that's opened up by the Lord and judgment comes upon the earth, but He says you know I will not erase your name from the book of life. This book of life, uh, which is somewhere God has it with Him and He can open it and look at it at any time. Paul seems to think here, or seems to say, that those who are believers in Christ Jesus, their, name, their names are in the book of life. And they'll probably remain there forever. Now, rejoice in the Lord, always. Again, I would say, rejoice. Now, rejoice, he says, in the Lord. I noticed as I was reading Philippians 4, there's like 10, 11, 12 things, just little thoughts that I had uh, as an outline for the scripture. You know, he says, you know, first of all, he tells us to stand firm. We talked about that. And then he says to be of the same mind. He talked about Yodin and Syntyche, being of the same mind. You know, these words are for us as well. We as believers should be of the same mind. We have the same word. It, it's amazing sometimes that we all have this same Bible, and yet we seem so far apart in so many different areas. Uh, I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with the little differences, but man, sometimes, you know, it's as if, you know, the church is... Uh, one thing or the other, or not one thing or the other, and there's just too much confusion that goes on, and people see that. Uh, well, we are we are admonished several, in several places to be of the same mind, think the same things, and I will have to also say that in general, most of the Christian denominations, the basic foundation of the blood of Jesus Christ and it is is pretty much the same but after that it kind of just goes haywire and I don't think that's right and I think it needs to be corrected uh, I don't know how you could correct it but it needs to be I pray the Lord will correct it uh, and then once again here the third point I want to point out is just to help help those who labor, help them, you know. Don't hinder them, help them. The fourth point is rejoice in the Lord. We'll come back to that because that's going to be my focus uh, this time. And then number five, he says, let it be known. Your gentleness or your forbearance, you know, how you are living, how you're holding up uh, in this walk in the Lord. Let it be known. Um, if you're doing it, it will be known. You're doing it openly. And then uh, point number six is be anxious for nothing. That plain and simple. You know, be anxious for nothing. And when you think about it, if you just stop here and think about this, we really have nothing to be anxious about. Really, we have... We have everything that God has given to us freely in Christ Jesus. It, it, it's ours in abundance. It's not just, God doesn't just sprinkle it out, man. He pours it out. 
He poured out his love into our hearts. He poured out the Holy Spirit. He didn't sprinkle it, you know. It's poured out. And all, it says, all his promises are in him, yes, and in him, amen. That means yes and amen. They're, they're there and they're done. They're complete. There's nothing else to do except to enjoy them, like he says. He richly and freely gives us all things to enjoy. So anxiety is for someone who doesn't have something and wants something or is afraid something's going to happen. You know, be anxious for nothing, he said. Be anxious for nothing. But with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our request be made known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses not only will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And it will. We don't we shouldn't be anxious or worried. Remember he said, uh, don't worry about your life, what you eat or drink, or what you wear. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all the things you have need of, he gives you. He knows what things you have need of. Then he says, the hairs of your head are numbered. You're worth more than many sparrows. You know, one greater than Solomon is here. One greater. One greater, one greater, that's Jesus Christ, through whom God has given us all things freely, abundantly, without reservations. When you believe in Jesus Christ, all the promises that he made, God made to us, to him, are yours. Because now, remember, you died, your life is hidden with Christ in God. It's no longer you who live, but it's Christ Jesus who lives in you. Now, I know that's hard to get. And, you know, it probably takes a little time to meditate on that and mature in it. But you're no longer who you used to be. You're a different person. So, you know, act that way. Uh, Next thing, number seven, is uh, think and meditate. Excuse me. On. Well, he gave a list, but we got all of God's Word we can think on and meditate on. Any time of day, whenever we want to. We can either pick it up and read it, or we can have it memorized and think about it. Meditate about it. Chew it. Talk about it. You know? Give God thanks for it. Ask for wisdom, understanding. Think about it. You know, think about these things. Think about them. The whole, all of the Word of God was written for us, for our learning, it says. So take it all. Take every bit of it. Old, new. It's all one. It's all for those who believe in Jesus Christ. Now, you know, you have to rightly divide the word of truth and shun profane and idle babblings and things such as that. You know, you don't just, you know, go and read and, you know, there are things that God has said and done that isn't particularly for you and you personally here in this day and time or is something that you should or shouldn't do, but they're all for our learning. We can now learn, it says, like he says, all scripture is breathed out by God and they're profitable for teaching, for correction, for reproving, and for training in all righteousness. It doesn't say some, it says all. And then like I already said, all things that were written beforehand were written for our learning so that we, through patience and comforts of the scripture, may have hope. Meditate on the scriptures. Those are the true reports. Those are the noble and virtuous things. Oh, to think about. Thank you, Jesus. Then number eight, uh, to practice these things. And you can't practice these things apart from God, apart from Christ, apart from the Holy Spirit. Get that through your head. And when you read, you think, man, I got to do all this? Forget it. Well, yes, forget it. Because you can't do all that. 
That's why God sent his Holy Spirit. That's why you died. You died. You died. You died. You died. You're dead. And you've been risen from the dead. And you are a new creation. That old person with all the worry and anxiety and fear and doubts. He died. He's dead. He don't live unless you resurrect him. Let him stay dead and put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. Because in those areas of fear and anxiety, that's the, that's, that's the work of the flesh. That's not. That's not the Holy Spirit. That's the work of the flesh. Uh, don't fulfill the work of the flesh. Don't walk in the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Practice. And then say, give. You give. We give. We are givers. He says, be content. You know, give, be content. Give, be content. And, you know, don't be stingy. Don't try to hold on to everything. Give, give things away. Be generous. And freely give as God has freely given to us. That's what he gives us his Holy Spirit to do. Then we praise God. We praise him. We give thanks to him. We worship him. We sing about him. We talk about him. We, we, we spend time with him. He's our God, our Savior. We need to praise him, he says. Number 10, and then Number 11, I say, says, be at peace with God, with each other. And I guess I could say with yourself. Be at peace. The peace that passes understanding is in God and in Him alone. Then number 12, once again, think. Think. Uh, Luke 12. Let's go to Luke 12 right quick. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> oh, got some indigestion. Uh, let's see. Let's go to Luke 12. Let's start over on this thing. I don't want to start over there. Let me start over here. I hope this is coming through. Uh, and this understanding. Let's go with Luke. <laughs> Luke twelve. Beginning at 22. Let's see what it says. Uh, thinking. Here he says, And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. Now, when we're that way, we can be content. And, you know, we, we don't have to think. You know, anxious, 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 being anxious is thinking about things. Thinking too much about one thing over the other, as we said before. So when, we, when we're anxious, that means that we are thinking about whatever it is that's causing us anxiety instead of God. Right? So then he tells us to think on these things that are true and so on and so on. We already read. Now, we want to be generous. Philippians, they were very generous people. And they gave in abundance to Paul when he needed it. And he praised him for it and said it was a sweet-smelling sacrifice unto God. And then greet everyone 
And then the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you as he closes. And that's what we all want. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ to be with us. Amen. Now, let's get back to rejoicing in the Lord. Always. Again, I will say, rejoice in the Lord, I add. Now, that's something that we should do. <laughs> I mean, you know, we just should do it. Rejoice. Now, what is rejoicing? Well, it's exalting God. It's praising Him. It's being thankful to Him. You know, always. You're joyful in Him and what He's done. You know, what's it say? The, the joy of the Lord is my strength. When he has joy in me, I am strong. He makes me strong. And when I rejoice in him, it makes me strong. Not to the point that I'm some kind of superman, but that I lose all my anxiety and fear when I rejoice in the Lord. Not in myself, not in the pastor, not in church, not in anything. Rejoice, he says, in the Lord always. Again, he says rejoice. Now, uh, in Romans, we find that that's part of the, uh, the Holy Spirit. We go to Romans 14 and 17, it says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, is there anything what we would consider negative in there? No, let's see, righteousness. Well, our righteousness is filthy rags, so it's not talking about us. And peace, well, you know, sometimes we're peaceful, sometimes we're not, so that's not our peace either. And joy. Oh, well, we hardly ever are joyful. So this is all from God. And the Holy Spirit, he says. Because the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. And what he's saying, Luke, don't worry about your body, what you eat and drink. Because the kingdom of God has nothing to do with eating and drinking. That's the body. Right? The body has to eat and drink. But the kingdom of God is righteousness, it's peace, it's joy in the Holy Spirit. You can't have any of that apart from the Holy Spirit. Like I already said, our righteousness is filthy rags. There's none good, no, not one. Nobody seeks after God. Nobody. We've all turned away. That's why God sent his only begotten son into the world out of his love because we cannot save ourselves. Paul made that clear in Galatians. You can't start in the spirit and then finish in the flesh or vice versa. You have to remain in the spirit. So when you were saved, you were saved by grace through faith. You don't stay saved by working. No, you don't. You stay faith saved. You stay saved because of the righteousness and the peace and the joy which is in the Holy Spirit, who lives in us and produces in us righteousness, joy, and peace. Hey, faith, hope, and love, these three. The greatest of these is love. And what's the first fruit of the Holy Spirit? Love. And joy. This joy that we can rejoice in. This is, uh, this is things we can think about and praise God for. And you know rejoice in the Lord through these things. Then we have what? Psalms 34 and 1. It says, I will... Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. There we go. Once again, I will praise the Lord. Bless. I will praise the Lord. Humble yourself. That's what bless 
means in this in these contexts. You're you're down low. You're down low. You know you're humble before the Lord. You blessing Him and then you praise Him. You can lift up your voice, lift up your hands, and praise the Lord. Be joyful in Him. Rejoice in what He's done and who He is. Oh, yes, in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Psalms 81. It says, Sing aloud to God our strength. Make a joyful shout. To the God of Jacob. Praise the Lord once again. Rejoice in him. Just sing aloud. We don't have to uh, whisper our praise and our joy. We don't have to creep around, you know, in the shadows, uh, praising God, you know, rejoicing in him. Do it loudly. Do it openly. Do it because of who he is. Bless him. Rejoice in him. What's it say? He's our strength. He is our strength. I'd like to pray now that and give thanks to God because He is what I need. And He supplies all my need. Every day. Without fail. And you can praise Him for that. Rejoice in Him for that. This is joyful. God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, loves us. Loves us. So much so that He gives us all that we need. That's why we have food. That's why we have air. That's why we have rain. That's why we have all we have. Because God has provided that for man. And he especially provides that for those who believe in him through Jesus Christ. So we sing aloud. We don't have to whisper. We sing aloud to God our strength. And we make a joyful shout. A praise, a rejoicing, a joyful shout. To the Lord. We can sing. We can dance. Really. Dance. Can you dance before the Lord? Yes, you can. David did. I do. I will dance before the Lord. I love it. And let's do it. You know, let's, let's rejoice in Him. It's fun. God is, is, is a joy. He's not a terror. He's a terror to those who will have His wrath. But he's not a terror to those who have his love. Oh my gosh. He is, he is, <laughs> he is good for us. My gosh, he is good. He's not a terror. He's a joy. God himself is a joy. And let's rejoice in him. Once again, rejoice, Paul says. In Psalms 150. I mean, these are just a few scriptures I, um, I'm using for this particular uh, message, but I've got, I mean, just several scriptures that talks about. I mean, what have I got here? Just the ones I wrote down, and there's many more. I've got 30 of them at least here. I'm not going to give them all right now because they take the rest of the night. But uh, joy, there's, there's a lot of joy that God has given and God speaks about in his word. Joy in Him, rejoicing in Him, <laughs> praising Him, loving Him, thanking Him. That's all praise. That's all rejoicing. We rejoice in the Lord. Lord, thank you for your salvation. We rejoice in the Lord. Lord, thank you for your healing. We rejoice in the Lord. Lord, thank you for supplying my need. We rejoice in the Lord. Thank you for this house. Thank you for this car. Thank you for our bed sheets. Thank you for our pillows. Thank you for our life, this day you give us. Thank you, Lord. That's rejoicing, rejoicing in him always. Praising him, shouting him, dancing before him, singing. Not being anxious or worried, but rejoicing in the Lord always. Psalms 150 and 36 says, Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. 
praise the Lord. Well, there you have it. You can praise him with instruments and you can praise him with your mouth. Everything that has breath. Praise God. Let, rejoice in him. And praise his holy name. And, you know, don't be worried. Don't be anxious. The, the things that we're worried and anxious about are given to us freely by him in Jesus Christ. So if you're anxious or worried, just remember uh, his joy and rejoice in him. Let's remember his benefits, as David says. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord once again. Rejoice, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not his benefits. He heals all of our diseases, forgives all of our iniquities. He delivers us from the pit. Wow. And he delivers us from all the things. He delivers us from death and the power of the devil. Oh. He lets us live quiet and peaceful lives. He allows us to take care of our business, not being dependent on anyone. He allows us to have what we need and even have enough to give to others. Rejoice. Be glad in him because he is glad in you. And Father, oh Lord, we appreciate you, Jesus. Let us continue to rejoice and be glad in you. In Jesus Christ, I pray and give thanks. Amen, amen, amen.